When the Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme was built in the later part of the last century, and I was there when it started, it was seen as a wonder of engineering, a young country calling on skilled people from around the world to complete a massive project that would deliver water for agriculture and be paid for by supplying electricity to a growing nation. Snowy Hydro knows that the community is keen to understand more about the way it operates. And so this DVD has been produced by Snowy Hydro in an effort to present the facts. We'll take a look at how the Snowy scheme has evolved into Snowy Hydro, the company, what is now the core business, how it's transformed over the last 10 years and how it's now part of a modern electricity market. But we'll also touch on the future. During the 1950s and 60s, the Snowy Mountains region was the center of a major engineering project and at the forefront of national and social change. The scheme was a breakthrough in engineering technology and a credit to those who strive to make it a reality. It was originally designed for an era when electricity was relatively new to Australia, a time before the explosion of the wonderful devices that have been developed to meet the needs of a growing and modern society. Air conditioning, home entertainment systems, a myriad of electrical appliances, as well as an overall growth in our economy and standard of living, all depend increasingly on reliable electricity. You would rightly say that those who designed the Snowy Scheme were visionaries, but they couldn't have predicted the increase in demand for power or the development of a national electricity market with national and international players. Back then, it was sufficient to simply generate electricity. But this has changed, and changed forever. Even though we manage and operate the assets, we know the demand for electricity has changed. The market now works like this. Generators like Macquarie Generation, Delta Electricity, and Araring Energy produce the electricity in power stations and bid to supply power into the system. Retailers such as Country Energy, Energy Australia and Integral Energy purchase this electricity, but the price can vary greatly depending on availability and on consumer demand. They then resell it to consumers and industry. Snowy Hydro sits in the middle of this market. In the 1970s, the Snowy Scheme produced about 25% of the electricity required by New South Wales. But now, it competes in a national market and generally contributes less than 5% each year. To satisfy the needs of this new and growing market and to increase the company's earnings, Snowy Hydro was required to shift its business focus and skills away from low-priced electricity generation to generating only at peak demand times. The scheme became part of a market environment, so it had to change the way it operated, and the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Authority ceased to exist in 2002, transforming into the market-focused and return-driven Snowy Hydro Limited. Snowy Hydro already acts as a corporation's law company in every sense, with a critical difference that we can't raise additional equity. Every other company can simply go to the share market and raise cash, whereas we're un unable to do so. Demand for electricity continues to grow, but because the scheme is located in a national park, Snowy Hydro can't build more dams and power stations to produce more electricity. Further expansion is impossible. Just supplying peak energy from the scheme into the market would not give us enough revenue for us to grow the business, maintain our assets, and also provide our shareholders with decent dividends. So Snowy Hydro had to do something else. Snowy's solution was to develop a range of insurance products to help its customers manage their price risks. Just like insuring your home against fire or theft, electricity retailers like Country Energy and Energy Australia also need to insure against their risk in the market. And here's why. Imagine a hot day in New South Wales with the mercury hovering in the high 30s. Right across the state, 
consumers are turning on their air conditioners. This creates very high demand for electricity. Generators supply electricity into the system and retailers, like Country Energy, buy this power. The price fluctuates in five minute intervals, 24 hours a day, every day of the year. For example, every five minutes, electricity prices may vary anywhere between zero and $10,000 per unit, depending on supply and demand. So on that hot day, when people are all switching on their air conditioners at once, there's a rapid jump in demand, which causes a jump in the price for electricity that retailers may have to pay. But because consumers like you and me pay a reasonably constant price for our power, retailers can't recover the difference if the price suddenly increases. So they need some form of insurance, in the same way you or I would for our car or home and contents. If a retailer is willing to accept the risk of the price rising to say $300 in the market, they may take out an insurance contract with Snowy Hydro to protect them if the price goes higher. Now, if the price does go above the agreed $300, the retailer makes a claim and Snowy Hydro pays the difference back to the retailer. Snowy can then send more electricity into the system to meet extra demand and earns revenue at the higher price. This, in addition to the insurance premiums they charge the retailer. And because of these insurance contracts, a lot of the time, many of Snowy's turbines sit in standby mode, earning revenue and only generating when it's absolutely essential. Electricity insurance contracts form a very substantial part of Snowy Hydro's revenue. And that's the way it has to be because Snowy simply doesn't have the water to compete solely as a generator, or for that matter, even just as a supplier of peak electricity. Because the market is changing, our flexibility to earn revenue without always having to use water is becoming increasingly important, especially in times of drought. We had to think smarter and earn sufficient income uh, to do all the things that we need to do. So these days, Snowy Hydro is more of an insurance company to the electricity industry than a generator, currently offering products to meet the demands of energy retailers and generators. It's incredible to think that this turbine is earning money for Snowy Hydro right now, and yet no water has passed through its blades today. But the ability of this turbine to start without fail when needed underpins the commercial success of the company. Without it, Snowy wouldn't be able to offer profitable and attractive insurance products to the market. And that's why Snowy Hydro spends a large and increasing amount of money maintaining and caring for the scheme assets. Top quality maintenance is critical to our company's success. This plant is now in better condition and more reliable than ever before. Our engineers do a great job of maintaining and operating the scheme. Without them, and the highly reliable plant that they give us, we wouldn't be able to sell our insurance contracts. The electricity market is changing and Snowy Hydro must change to compete with these private sector vertically integrated companies like Origin Energy and AGL, who are getting larger. Vertical integration is where one company owns every part of the supply chain, from the resource to the consumer. In the case of Origin Energy, they explore for gas, tap it and transport it and now they've begun building gas-fired power plants. In addition, Origin has its own large retail arm. That's where they sell directly to consumers, likewise with AGL. So from the resource to the consumer, companies like Origin and AGL have it covered. But their advantage is further enhanced by the fact that they already own the gas. Now Snowy Hydro, until the present time, has really been the major provider of fast generation in the electricity market. But with Origin, AGL and other companies going into gas-fired generation, Snowy Hydro will no longer be the main player. I've been working with Hydro Plant for over 20 years now, and certainly gas-fired plant is just as competitive as Hydro Plant for fast start capability in the national electricity market. The scheme could never be built again, but the equivalent of the scheme's generating capacity is being built in the form of gas plant every four to five years, 
Five years ago, in response to the gas-fired competitive threat and the forecast growth in electricity demand, Snowy Hydro wisely embarked on a program of large-scale investment to grow the business with its own gas-fired generation plants. It's obviously important for Snowy Hydro to continue to grow, to be able to meet the essential requirements of the national electricity market. Snowy Hydro is experiencing low inflows as a result of climate change, but also our capability to expand within Kosciuszko National Park is limited. Therefore, it is absolutely essential that we move into gas-fired power generation. This is Snowy Hydro's gas generation plant at Laverton, on the outskirts of Melbourne. Snowy also owns and operates a similar plant about 200 kilometres southeast of here in the Latrobe Valley. To date, the company has invested over $500 million in gas-fired plant. But with the market growing and changes to the industry now likely, Snowy Hydro needs to secure additional gas generation to ensure its future. That will cost an extra $1 billion. A few years ago, Snowy Hydro also turned its attention to protecting its end user customer base because of the changes occurring in the market. And so in 2004, the company purchased Red Energy, a Victorian electricity retailer. In this way, Snowy Hydro was able to structure its business and its systems to develop a vertically integrated company model, albeit very small when compared to such Goliaths as Origin and AGL. Red Energy has uh, enjoyed terrific growth in, uh, in Victoria over the past three years. Um, we've got a staff of more than 250 now. As we look around the market, all of the, the retailers are matching themselves up with the generator. So vertical integration is really the way that organisations and the energy market achieve uh, long-term success and relevance. As the market changes, um, we need to be part of that change process. Snowy Hydro was a very, very large part of the market once, and as each year goes by, it becomes a smaller proportion. It's very, very important that Snowy grows, and as it grows, um, it needs somewhere to sell its power, and uh, Red Energy as a retailer is the obvious choice for that. We now have two gas-fired power stations in Victoria, along with a growing retail business. In fact, over 40% of Snowy Hydro Limited's employees are now based in Victoria. Governments claim that the sale of electricity assets out from their ownership delivers important capital investment and competitive pricing for consumers. The New South Wales government says that's essential to the state's future electricity supply. But what does the sale or lease of the rest of the electricity industry mean for Snowy Hydro when it's not included? The sale or lease of the New South Wales electricity businesses is sensible but will result in major industry restructuring. Large companies with generation interests will acquire retailers. They will own everything from the resource through generation to retail sales to consumers. But in the process, as the industry becomes fully privatised and vertically integrated, the demand for our insurance contracts will decline over time. The vertically integrated large companies will be able to do their own internal price risk management. As most people will be aware, that if a company doesn't grow to meet the growing needs of its customers, other competitors will come in and provide those needs of the customers. And this is why it's really important for Snowy Hydro to continue to grow our fast start gas-fired generation, be able to meet those increasing needs of the customers. The planned sale or lease of New South Wales electricity assets is very likely to result in Snowy Hydro's customers such as Energy Australia, Country Energy and Integral Energy being acquired by Snowy's competitors, Origin Energy, AGL and others. Something stripped off the prices just gone through the roof.
Snowy Hydro is an impressive operation. You have equipment manufactured more than half a century ago, now working with today's technology, including the latest in telecommunications and control systems. But for this to continue, significant investment is required. It's critical that the technology is up to date and well maintained so that we can effectively trade in the market. We've been given terrific assets across the scheme and it deserves and needs continual care. Some of the equipment is 50 years old and costs associated with maintaining and upgrading it are very high. We've already committed $800 million to planned upgrades, but we need access to additional capital to assure the Snowy Scheme is continually kept at a high class standard. The maintenance and upgrade of this equipment has increased significantly over the years. It's expensive and relentless. But the three shareholders in Snowy Hydro, the New South Wales, Victorian and Federal governments, have made it clear that they're unwilling to put any additional capital into the business. So, where does that leave Snowy Hydro? It leaves Snowy Hydro as a business in a very difficult position, especially when you recognise the obligations we have ongoing in relation to water. We are having continual and increasing demands put on us in terms of environmental flows and managing the water within our storages and of course the releases from our storages into the government owned dams downstream of the Snowy Scheme. And all of this we do without financial compensation to Snowy Hydro. For example, we've just spent $100 million upgrading Jindabyne Dam to enable the release of water into the Snowy River for environmental flows. In addition to its normal business activity, Snowy Hydro must provide water to be released as environmental flows. The management and delivery of this water happens without any payment to Snowy Hydro. And the company is legally obligated to these releases, even in the most extreme conditions, as experienced recently when inflows fell to record lows. To continue to safely and efficiently conduct the scheme's water operations, the Snowy Scheme requires constant maintenance and upgrade of its asset network. This includes the hydro assets themselves and the remote computerised communication and control systems. This significant cost of subsidising the scheme's water services can only be met by the company successfully competing in the electricity market. Snowy Hydro doesn't own water and therefore doesn't sell water. In fact, Snowy Hydro's usage of water is strictly controlled by the governments under a stringent license. Really, the scheme is a water scheme paid for by an electricity business. Over recent years, Snowy Hydro has continued the vision of the Snowy Scheme, recognising its obvious limitations and the increasing cost of operations, Snowy Hydro has carefully and strategically evolved its activity towards high-priced peak electricity demand, introduced price-risk financial insurance contracts, added fast-start gas generation capability and developed a greatly important retail customer base. And all of this in the last decade. We must be given the best chance we can of continuing our commercial success. Both the employees of Snowy Hydro and the regional communities in which we live benefit from a successful Snowy Hydro. Snowy Hydro needs additional equity, but our shareholders are understandably reluctant to commit more funds to an industry they've chosen to exit. Unfortunately, the level of funds we can generate internally and borrow from external sources will not be enough to fund all the challenges that now lie ahead of us. The company has borrowings of about $800 million that is not government guaranteed. To continue providing financial risk product to the market, Snowy Hydro's credit rating must remain stable to trade at all. 
Now, of course, some people might say, what's wrong with reverting back to the days of operating as an authority? What's wrong with simply being the snowy scheme? Well, the market has moved too far, and so have we. We just didn't have a choice. Turning back the clock is not an option. The market has seen to that. But in this new world, the company can better reward our people and be a better contributor to our local communities by being a successful and competitive business. We've used these incredible assets to create a strong commercial enterprise that competes in the real world. And I think that moving into the future, that's what the icon deserves. We now have an obligation to leave no stone unturned in our search for ways to protect the value of our business. We'll always want to attract the best people, and to do that we have to be the best company. The scheme deserves the right to retain its own identity as part of Snowy Hydro moving into the future. The challenge now is to continue the vision. If there is to be ongoing community discussion about our future, and I hope there is, I appeal for it to be a positive debate, to be accurately informed, and above all, to be forward thinking. From engineering and cultural icon to innovative, competitive business, Snowy Hydro has built itself up and secured its position to be a significant participant in the Australian electricity market today. However, Snowy Hydro is facing its biggest challenge yet, how to survive in a rapidly changing industry where rivalry is fierce and competitors have deep pockets and Snowy Hydro does not have access to the additional capital that it requires. As governments around Australia exit the electricity industry, and for good reason, can Snowy Hydro remain independently viable in the long term? Well, it seems clear that what happens in the next 12 months will determine if Snowy Hydro can complete the move from the history books of yesterday as an icon into tomorrow as a major Australian company and continuing force in the national electricity market. If you want more information regarding any of the topics covered in this DVD, log on to snowyhydro.com.au, email community feedback at snowyhydro.com.au, or call 1800 623 776. Or if you want the latest business updates, you can register to join Snowy Hydro's email list by calling 02 6453 2014. The community has been a vital part of the history of the scheme and the company. Snowy Hydro wants the community to be part of its future. I'm Steve Liebman. Thanks for joining us.